Welcome back. Today in our Smart Start, a man was killed following a shooting on Lyle Avenue yesterday. According to Rochester Police, this marks the 44th homicide to date so far this year. Shortly after 1.30 Sunday morning, Monroe County Sheriff's deputies, New York State troopers, and Rochester Police responded to the 400 block of Lyle Avenue for a report of a man shot. When they arrived, they found a male in his 30s who had been shot, and that victim was taken to Strong Memorial Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. No suspects are in custody, and Rochester Police Department's Major Crimes Unit is investigating this case. In the overnight hours on Saturday, another homicide in the city of Rochester, this one occurring on North Clinton Avenue. Officers had responded to the scene around 3.30 a.m. and found a man in his mid-20s suffering from a gunshot wound to the upper body. He was pronounced dead at the scene. This homicide occurred less than a mile from the location where a triple shooting occurred just last Wednesday, where two people were also killed. All of this as the city continues to mourn the death of Rochester police officer Tony Mazurkowitz, who was shot and killed last Thursday in the line of duty. He had been conducting surveillance alongside Officer Sino Sang in an unmarked police car for a murder investigation when 21-year-old Kelvin Vickers of Massachusetts allegedly approached the car from behind and shot at the officers repeatedly, fatally striking Officer Mazurkowitz. Vickers has been charged with second-degree murder, second-degree assault, two counts of criminal possession of a weapon, among other charges. He'll be back in court on Wednesday. And to honor Officer Anthony Mazurkowitz, Officer Sino Singh, and all Rochester area law enforcement, Rochester General Hospital lit blue overnight. Mazurkowitz was fatally shot last Thursday during what investigators called an ambush shooting. Rochester General Hospital says their hearts go out to the family of Officer Mazurkowitz and that they thank Officer Singh for his service. Two women have been arrested for allegedly bringing drugs into an Attica prison. They say Lorena Peria of Fairport and Nautica Maddox of Gates had marijuana and tobacco on them while inside the Attica Correctional Facility. They were transported to state police in Warsaw for processing and were released on appearance tickets returnable to Attica Town Court. A local soccer, soccer player is doing his part to advocate for his home country of Ukraine, which is in the midst of a war with Russia. Andrei Demidiv, a defender for the Flower City Union, was born in Ukraine and still has family overseas. To make sure his home country continues to receive everything it needs, he and a teammate wore jerseys with the Rock Maidan logo on the front, which they'll sign and auction off with the proceeds going to Rock Maidan, who also set up a table of Ukrainian merchandise, which people could take after making a donation. All right, let's bring in James Gilbert now for a look at our morning forecast. James, a little wet out there still for that morning walk. Mm, yeah, you might run into a couple of leftover puddles, so to speak. Uh, now, so while some areas saw half an inch to an inch plus, others not so much. If you were uh, along Lake Ontario, you're asking, where was the rain? Yeah, it was all across the Finger Lakes, at least for the most part. Even had some storm reports uh, down in Wyoming County. But otherwise, we're starting in the 70s and we'll finish in the 70s for the 25th of July. A normal high is 83. We're going to go mid 70s for this afternoon. We'll have a last look at the eight day forecast at the end of the show. All right, James, thank you. Looking at our sunrise uh, traffic now, one last time. We do have an accident in Cedarwood at Cedarwood Terrace at Mildorf Street in Rochester. Otherwise, things looking pretty good out there. 394, 95, 90 are clear, so should be a smooth ride into work. Well, the man who allegedly assaulted Congressman Lee Zeldin was arrested on felony charges. 43-year-old David Jacobunis, a Fairport, is charged with assaulting a member of Congress using a dangerous weapon which carries a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison. According to court documents, Congressman Zeldin had been speaking in Parrington on Thursday, standing on a flatbed trailer for the event. Jacobunis walked onto the trailer, approaching the congressman, extended a keychain with two sharp points toward him and grabbed his arm. That led to a struggle between the two as bystanders also intervened. Court documents then say Jacobunis pulled Congressman Zeldin down onto the bed of the trailer, stating several times during the assault, quote, you're done, before he was arrested. Jacobunis is being held pending a detention hearing on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Now, in response to that incident, New York State Senate Republican Leader Rob Ort, candidate for Congress Leron Singletary, along with other community members, gathered near the Monroe County Hall of Justice this weekend, calling for a special legislative session to repeal New York bail reform laws. 
While that suspect is now in custody, like Amel said, after being arrested on felony charges over the weekend, local leaders claim Jacobinus was released due to bail reform last week after he was originally arrested following that incident. Some local leaders say certain bail reform laws, along with New York gun legislation, is making communities unsafe for law-abiding citizens. Well, switching gears now, the Bills training camp is back at St. John Fisher for the first time since 2019, and today marks day two of the camp. Eric had a call, spoke to some fans coming from out of state just to see how the team is shaping up. She joins us now in studio with more. Eric Hedda. Good morning, and this is a story about a special father-son road trip, but it's also a story about how generous and selfless the Bills Mafia really is. Jeremy and Aiden Ford live in Virginia and are huge Bills fans. They wanted to make the 10-hour trip to Rochester for training camp for their first ever father-son drive, but getting tickets was not easy at all. Father Jeremy Ford tells me he booked the perfect Airbnb in Pittsburgh ahead of getting tickets, thinking he'd just log onto the site as soon as it went up and secure two free tickets easily. Unfortunately, he logged on to see a thousand people in front of him in line before the computer glitched, putting 11,000 people ahead. When he finally got through, it said all the tickets were gone. He and his son stayed determined and turned to a Facebook group for Bill's Mafia. They shared their story in the group and got a tremendous amount of support in return. At that point, I was thinking, well, this is a a mess, but we're still going. Like, there's no way we're not going. I, I've never been there before, but I thought, even if we have to watch from the other side of the fence, like, there's got to be a way that we can still see. Maybe people will be scalping tickets or something. I just kind of posted our story, father-son trip, house already rented, and within 24 hours, I had all three of the practices that we're going to covered. Um, you know, and, and people, I think, people could have charged more. They, they were very generous. And the two will be driving up today, attending camp Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. If you're wondering what Bills fans are doing all the way in Virginia, by the way, Jeremy tells me it's because their hometown, Richmond, has connections to the former quarterback, Jim Kelly. Jeremy says he grew up a huge fan of his, even watched some games at the bars with Kelly's two brothers in his college years. In the studio, Eric Cost, News 8. Thank you, Eric Cutta. For more Bills coverage, just head to our website, rochesterfirst.com. And to some more Bills news, plenty of news from the first day of Bills camp, including the first time Bills safety Jordan Poyer met with media since he requested a new contract. Poyer skipped much of the offseason program, but he wasn't skipping yesterday. One of the reasons suggested why Poyer does not have a new deal is his age. He's 31 years old. But questions about Poyer still performing at his age, he says only fuel his fire. A brush fire near Yosemite National Park exploding in the size on Saturday and to one of California's biggest wildfires of the year, prompting evacuation orders for thousands of people. That fire is now estimated to cover almost 16,000 acres and remains at 0% containment. An estimated 2,700 structures are at risk due to flames, and reports suggest that 10 have been destroyed with five more damaged. The fire is fueled by dead trees, dense tall grass, dead leaves, and the heat and lack of humidity, creating a challenging fire environment. California has faced more than 4,000 wildfires this year alone. The World Health Organization has declared the monkeypox outbreak as a global health emergency. The WHO Director General said that the disease has expanded to more than 16,000 cases from 75 countries and territories. He also says that currently this is an outbreak mainly among men who have sex with men, especially those with multiple sexual partners. All right, here's what some people might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. Some ice cream flavors may be at risk of shortages. The increased hit is hindering production for cocoa, coffee, vanilla, and nuts. So your favorite flavors, including any of those ingredients, could be harder to find on shelves. As somebody who likes Rocky Road, I'm a little bit nervous about that. Go ahead. <laughs> James. Yes. I don't want to hear ice cream shortages. Come on, not no. ice cream. Well, there's usually ways around it, right? There's certain other ice creams that we can enjoy. Yeah. Uh, on hot summer days. Go I had the local. ice cream sandwich uh, <laughs> over the weekend. Burn Dairy, the ice cream sandwiches from there. Mm, I don't know yum. if you guys have ever had them, but they're very good. I have not had that one yet. No, no. I yeah. think I'm a Ben and Jerry's kind of gal. Yeah. Okay, there you go. You make your own ice cream sandwich. 
uh, if you'd like. We have an isolated shower left over near Gorham. This is about it. Once this moves out of here, passes uh, through over Seneca Lake, we're in good shape. Goodbye. That happens in about 20 minutes or so. Then we look at our eight-day forecast and we say, yeah, back to the 80s as we get into tomorrow and much of the week. Best chance for rain really here is going to be Wednesday night and into Thursday. That's certainly when it's going to be the hottest. That's when it's going to be the most humid as well. And you see the overnight lows. They come right back up into the middle and upper 60s there. So uh, a nice break today. Yeah. Let's enjoy the sunshine. Let's enjoy the cooler weather before we warm back up uh, by the middle of the week. Absolutely, James. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us here on News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in just 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next.